Well, hello. I'm Robert Kaplavka, and I'm going to be sharing a presentation with you guys um, called Waking Up Your Bike for Spring. Going to be going over some basic repairs and maintenance that you're going to be needing to do before you take your bike out this spring. The first step is to take your bike down from whatever safe place you've had it stored in all winter long, or dig it out of the garage or basement wherever it got tossed last fall. Now, this is a bike that has quite a few problems. If you could all take a few minutes and just think about what do you see that's wrong with this bicycle, other than the fact that it's just old. Well, there's no reflectors. No reflectors front, back, and nothing on the wheels. And there is lots of dirt and corrosion on this bicycle lots and lots of dirt and corrosion. You can see the rust on the sprocket and rust on the chain, rusty wheels, um, the fenders, uh, just lots of dirt, lots of corrosion that needs to be taken care of on this bike. Also, these tires are badly, badly dry rot. Um, these cracks along the sidewall are a very bad sign. If you look at your tires and you see cracks along the sidewall, that tire needs to be replaced. Um, as the dry rotting gets worse and worse and when it reaches this level, there's every possibility that this tire, if it was inflated and a load placed on it, the tire could just separate while you're out riding along. So if you see this kind of cracking on your tires, you need, you need to get new ones and replace them. You can see as I press down, the cracking opens up even more. These tires have got to go. Now it's time to start taking this bike apart. This particular bike is an old-fashioned coaster brake bike. Uh, I'm sure lots of you have seen this kind of bike. Maybe you rode one as a kid. Uh, maybe you still have one. They're still very common. That's the type where you turn the pedals backwards to brake it. They're not, there aren't hand brakes. So first step is to disconnect that coaster brake arm. And now taking off the rear axle, Whenever you're working on pretty much anything, you really want to make sure you use the proper sized wrench. Um, this obviously, somebody has turned this nut with an adjustable wrench and they didn't make sure those jaws were tightened up each time they turned it. Um, adjustable wrenches, they can be useful, but you have to be very careful with them because if the jaws loosen up, you're gonna round over fasteners like this and end up having to replace those fasteners. Now, if you're removing the chain, if it's in bad enough shape like this one, um, you're gonna to need to find the master link. Quite simply, the master link is gonna be the one link on the chain that looks different. You can see here, this one has straight edges. It's not curved in like all the other chains, all the other links on the chain. So this is the master link. There are several different styles of master link. Some have a simple retaining clip that goes around here that you pry apart and the, the master link just basically falls apart after that. This particular master link needs to be pressed out. Now, if you look at your chain and every single link is exactly the same, there is no discernible master link. You can take the chain off by following the process I'm gonna show you here pretty much on any link of the chain. Now this handy dandy pin press is available in that kit that I checked out from my local library. And basically it just pushes the pin out, the master link comes apart and I can remove the chain. When you're working on a bicycle, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is that on the left hand side of the bicycle, the threads on the pedals and the crank bearing retaining nuts are all left-handed. What that means is th there's the old standard saying righty tighty lefty loosey for pretty much any fasteners. That means you turn it towards the right to tighten it and towards the left to loosen it. That's with standard fasteners. With left-handed fast fasteners, it's just simply the opposite. You turn it left to tighten 
right to loosen. Um, they do that on bicycle pedals on the left side because otherwise it's quite possible that the pedals could come loose during normal operation of the bicycle. Now these are the crank bearings I removed from this bicycle. They were filled with gook and dirt and the grease that was in there had become just sticky and gooey and was definitely not lubricating these bearings anymore. And now I'm gonna remove the handlebars on this bicycle. I'm gonna remove the handlebars and the neck and pretty much all bicycles, 99% of them have something very, very similar to this holding the, the neck on. So simply loosen up the neck bolt about three eighths of an inch. Doesn't have to be taken all the way out. Then give it a little tap with a hammer. And then you can see the neck <clears throat> has fallen down into the fork tube. So I know it's loose. And this is what was holding in the neck. It's called a stem expander bolt. And it's got this long bolt, and then the nut is this wedge-shaped piece, and it engages with a wedge-shaped piece on the neck. And as you tighten it up, these expand and grip the inside of the fork tube. And if you, you could even remove this bolt entirely, these wedges will still be stuck together, and you won't be able to easily remove the, the neck. So that's why you tap it down, it comes loose and is easy to remove. Now these are the headset bearings on that front fork. They were also sticky and gooey and filthy and needed to be cleaned and, and re-lubricated. Now your bike is probably not in this bad of shape. You as long as the bike has been somewhat well taken care of, you're not gonna to need to go through this extensive of a rebuild. Like these are the front axle bearings off of this bicycle. This front wheel would barely turn. Fortunately, um, the bearings on this front wheel are caged type bearings, just like on the fork and the cranks. So they're very easy to remove, clean and replace. I also had to clean out the hubs which is the center part where those bearings ride. And now I'm removing the tire. Now, if you're replacing a tire on, on a bicycle, do not use screwdrivers to pry the bead of the tire off of the rim. There, there's uh, every possibility you could damage the rim. If it's a chrome rim, you're gonna scratch the rim. If it's an aluminum rim, you're gonna dig into that aluminum. You wanna use a plastic tool. These plastic tools, these particular ones that I'm using were in that kit that I checked out from my local library, but these are also available at bike stores or at bike supply websites. They're very inexpensive. They're nice because you can hook, you can hook the bead with one and then use a little hook, grab a spoke and it'll hold it in place. And then you take the other two and move them down the bead. It makes removing and replacing a tire very easy. Also, you don't want to pinch the tube. Um, if you're removing a tube to patch it, you don't want to create more holes that you're going to have to patch. So you want to be very careful not to damage that tube. Now these are the wheels from this bicycle. The one in front here, I haven't cleaned yet. You can see all of this surface rust looks really nasty. Well, the one in the back is after I've cleaned it. What I use to clean these rims was a product called Quadruple Zero Steel Wool. Now, if you're polishing rust off of chrome, make sure you get Quadruple Zero. That's four zeros. It will polish up the chrome and it will not scratch it. If you use Triple Zero Steel Wool or you grab an SOS pad out from under the kitchen sink, you will damage the chrome, you'll scour it, it will dull it up, and it will also make it rust much more quickly. So if you're gonna do this, um, make sure you go out and buy quadruple zero, four zeros, steel wool. It's available at hardware stores, home centers, um, very easy to find, but make sure four zeros. Now here's the bearings. They're all nice and clean. I've removed the bearing cups 
from the frame. That's these pieces here. These are for the crank bearings. These smaller ones are for the headset bearings. And I just took a brass punch and knocked them out from the reverse side. There's, these are a press fit, but it's not a tight press fit. Um, you don't need an arbor press or anything to remove and replace these. And here I am putting them back. Um, once again, they are a press fit, but they're not a super tight press fit. I just use a board on the bottom and a board on the top, hold them level, give them a nice tap with a ball peen hammer, they go right back in. Reinstalling the headset bearings, they need to be greased up really well. I just use plain old uh, red grease. You can buy a can of it at any hardware store. You don't need any kind of special super duper lithium grease, just plain old red axle grease. Plain old red grease from the hardware store um, here on the crank bearings. Now I'm reinstalling the cranks. This type of crank is called a one piece crank because the crank is all one piece. A lot of modern bicycles have a three piece crank where the center piece is one piece and then each crank arm is another piece. Um, those had their, they're bolted on and those are a fairly tight press fit. When, if you're gonna remove three piece cranks, you normally need a puller. Um, this, this is the little kit that I checked out from my library and there is a puller in there for removing three piece cranks. Now I'm putting new tires on the old inner tubes. Despite the age and neglect that this bike went through, the, the inner tubes were in perfect condition. They didn't leak. Um, and so I was very glad, I was very careful removing them. And actually I filled these up with air, hung the bike up in my garage all winter. And when I took it out this spring, it, each tire needed maybe three PSI. Um, but once again, I'm using the plastic tools to reseat the bead of the tire, pry it up over the rim. And you wanna make sure, don't use a screwdriver, don't use any metal object that can pinch the tube or damage your rim. Now I thought this was a clever safety feature on this old bicycle. I'm sure we've all heard horror stories about the front wheel coming off of a bicycle and somebody just going face first right into the pavement and losing some teeth. Well, this little washer, it's got this little hook on the end of it that fits into this hole on the front fork. And what that does, if the front axle nut comes a little bit loose, this washer will prevent the front wheel from falling off the bicycle. The front wheel would wobble and you would know it's loose but it wouldn't fall off and send your face into the pavement. And I point this out because if there are safety features on your bike, you wanna make sure you reinstall them exactly the same way they came off. This particular washer here, if I turn this tab to the side or had it facing down, it would defeat the purpose of this safety washer. So pay attention if you're disassembling something, and make sure each and every piece on the bicycle goes back exactly the way that it came off. Now here's the bike all put back together, but can anybody spot what I forgot? And I'm pointing this out because it's one of the things you need to do. You need to check over and see what possibly you have forgotten. Well, what I forgot was the chain guard. That's another important safety device. If you're wearing long pants, um, you will get your pants caught in the chain without the chain guard. But here it is, everything's put back together. I've got new reflectors on the wheels, front and back. Um, new rear reflector, new front reflector, everything is cleaned up and ready to go. But you wanna go back and double check every single fastener on the bike from the front wheel to the rear wheel, the seats, the handlebars, everything. Make sure everything is tightened. And of course, check your tire pressure. The recommended tire pressure is always gonna be embossed on the side of the tire, but it's important to remember that the pressure listed there is the maximum pressure. That's not necessarily the pressure you want to fill your tires to, that's the maximum that you can fill them to. 
if um, if you're a really big guy and you know maybe you're going to carry a lot of stuff on the bike maybe you do want to go pretty close to that maximum pressure but under normal circumstances you're probably going to want to keep it a few psi below that maximum pressure just remember that pressure is the absolute most you want to put in your tire now these are the tools that i would recommend using a basic socket set with metric and standard wrenches I also highly recommend a quarter inch drive ratchet. A lot of people have asked me, well, what torque do you torque um, the nuts and bolts on a bicycle to? Well, that, that's a, a really hard question to answer because it depends. It depends on what type of materials it is, but you're never gonna need to really, really crank down on a fastener on a bicycle. And if you thought about it, you could use a quarter inch drive socket to tighten every fastener on a bicycle and it would be tight enough. You're not gonna need to go really tighter than that. Um, they're all a quarter inch drive sockets also fantastic for getting into weird little spots. Um, a set of metric wrenches, a set of standard wrenches, a ball peen hammer, and I have here um, an adjustable wrench. And I put this one in here because if you're gonna use an adjustable wrench, you wanna use one like this. This particular adjustable wrench belonged to my dad. It's over 50 years old. And this thumb wheel, it spins very easily. The movable jaw does not wobble back and forth at all. Nice flat jaws and it, it works very well. One thing you want to be careful of, if, you, if you're using an adjustable wrench, grab a hold of this lower jaw. If you can move it up and down, throw that thing out. It's going to damage nuts and bolts that you try to use it on. Also, get yourself an extra 10 millimeter socket. Um, 10 millimeter sockets, that's kind of a running joke with mechanics because this is the one tool you can never find. Um, it's a very small tool and inevitably it goes missing. Um, someone has borrowed it or you set it down somewhere and you can't find it. And the thing is 10 millimeter fasteners are the most common fastener in the world. Um, even Harley Davidson's, um, my, a buddy of mine is, he's been a lifelong Harley Davidson mechanic and even he has to have a 10 millimeter socket in his toolbox because there's a part, I believe it's on the ignition that's manufactured in Canada, and there's a 10 millimeter fastener on that part. Screwdrivers. Good flat tips and different size Phillips heads. This is one of my favorite tools. This is a quarter inch socket set I picked up at a hardware store years and years ago, but it's got this little adapter that holds screwdriver bits. It's really get great for getting into right angle spots where you've got to re remove a fastener or if you've got a stubborn fastener that you've got to loosen up, um, very handy tool to have. You may also need Allen wrenches. Um, a lot of more modern bicycles, more modern than the one I was showing you there, um, use Allen wrenches. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have metric and standard. Um, most likely it's gonna be metric, but make sure you have metric and standard Allen wrenches for working on the, the more modern bicycles. Now WD-40. WD-40 is a great product for cleaning scratchy pots on old guitars. Um, these are the pots on this old guitar. And uh, it was recommended to me one time when I had pots that were making noise to spray them down with WD-40. And I thought, hmm, that sounds strange, but it worked great. WD-40 is not a great lubricant though. It's great for cleaning off very slight corrosion on things like old electronics but it's not good for spraying on your bicycle chain or your cables or your bearings on your, on your bike. Now this is the stuff that I use. I use plain old 409 to clean up the bike. I use this gunk parts degreaser and cleaner to get all of that gooky sticky grease off of it. And then I used a chain and cable lubricant. And this is one of the main things you're, you're probably going to want to have around for your bicycle is a, is a product that's specifically designed for lubricating chains and cables. You're, you've probably got hand brakes and um, the 
cables for the shifters. They're going to need to be lubricated with this and of course your chain. This one, this particular one is manufactured by Liquid Wrench, but there's several different brands of chain and cable lube and they all work great. If you need a penetrating oil to get a rusty fastener off, I really recommend this stuff. It's called PB Blaster and it's a very, very good penetrating oil. And um, all of this stuff, the degreaser, the chain and cable lubricant, and the PB Blaster, I picked up at the auto parts store down the street, as well as a, can, a bottle of uh, car wax, just plain old can, Carnuba car wax I used on all of the painted and chrome surfaces on this bike. And it's also nice to have a big old box of shop rags for cleaning stuff up. Now, like I said, your bike is not going to be in as nearly as bad a shape as this poor neglected old bicycle. But what are the minimums that you should do before you go out and ride your bike this spring? Well, you're going to want to check for a few things. Tire and brake wear. Um, the hand brakes are much more common these days than the coaster brakes like I showed you on this old bike. Check those pads. Um, they, they need to be soft. Uh, after years and years, even if they're not worn out, the brake pads harden up. Um, but if they are worn, just get yourself some new ones and your 10 millimeter wrench, because it takes a 10 millimeter to replace those. Put new ones on, you'll be glad you did. Check for any loose or missing parts. Anything that's loose, make sure you lock it down. Anything that's missing, reflectors, any safety devices, make sure they get replaced. Check for any corrosion. Any corrosion on your bike needs to be cleaned up and lubricated or use that car wax to prevent that corrosion from coming back. Wheel trueness. If you don't know what trueness means, that basically just means that the wheel spins straight. It's not angled, it doesn't wobble back and forth. And cleanliness, make sure your bike is nice and clean. I highly recommended highly recommend cleaning and waxing all painted and chrome parts. A little bit of car wax is going to make your paint look good and last longer. Um, it works fantastic for chrome parts as well, just preserving them, making them last longer, and making them look good for a lot longer. You need to lubricate your chain and all the cables and check your tire pressure. Now this bike here this is a lot more like what you've probably got sitting at home. You look at this bike, it looks good. It's pretty clean. Tires look good. It's got reflectors, front tire, back tire, rear reflector, front reflector. Front reflectors on the pedals are intact. But let's look a little bit closer at this bike. Frayed cables. This is on the rear break. If you jab yourself on especially bare skin, if you're wearing shorts with one of these things, it's like getting stuck with multiple needles at the same time. So this cable, it needs to be repaired or replaced. And this one actually is not in bad shape. It can be spun back together and a new ferrule crimped on the end. And also, believe it or not, cat hair is not a good chain lubricant. So I took this bike outside and I washed it. Basic car washing soap and a scrub brush. I even scrubbed the chain and sprockets with this plain old hot water and car washing soap. Then you're gonna to wanna to get it dry. I have an air compressor at home so I blew all the water off, but simply towel drying it. If you're towel drying your chain, make sure you use a rag because it's gonna look pretty bad after you dry it. Um, and then setting it out in the sun on a warm day will get it dry fast enough that it won't start corroding. And here I crimped a new ferrule, a new zinc ferrule on the end of that cable. And I'm going to degrease the chain and re-lubricate it and of course check the tire pressure. Now, whatever kind of bike you have, if you've got an old coaster brake bike like the green one I showed you, um, a retro bike like this Giant Simple 3, uh, a road bike like the almost mountain bike here, or even if you've got a high-tech recumbent bike like this, 
you're going to want to do basically the same things I showed you. Check it from front to back. Make sure that all of the safety devices are there and functioning. Make sure that all of the fasteners are tight. Make sure everything is clean and well lubricated. And get out there and have fun.